One of the first things my wife and I did when we bought this house a while back was order some baby chicks. So one of the first projects that I took on in this house was to build a chicken coop. But now that my wife and I are selling this house, we have to get rid of that chicken coop. And so I've already found a home for most of the chickens. However, the children were having a hard time parting with a couple of the birds. So among the tears and the reassurances that we were trying to do when I was shuttling birds off to their new home, my wife turned to me and said, can't you build something? To which I then turned to her and said, yeah, I, I build something all the time. To which she turned to me and said, so the issue was to build a chicken coop with two chickens. I needed to be able to pick the coop up with the two chickens in it and move it easily. It needs to double as a transport carrier for when we move, so it has to be solid with a large access so it can be cleaned easily and often. There are a lot of ways you can start a project like this. I decided to begin by building the front and back panels. The back panel was just some one by threes edge glued together. All the glue ups I did for this project went through the same process. So for the sake of time, I'm not gonna show me gluing up all the different panels and doors and bore you to death for half an hour. Now you could use plywood and eliminate the glue up process altogether. The choice is yours. I've never had very good success with using plywood for outdoor projects. So this is the material I chose to work with. Now it's back to the miter saw to cut the pieces for the front panel. The last project video I did, the DIY dowel jig, was inspired right about now. I was experimenting with pocket holes to see if they would hold in this low quality furring strip material I was using. An eight foot furring strip board runs about $1.60 to $1.90, much more cost effective than the five or six dollars for a pine board. But I also find it doesn't hold screws very well either. I went ahead and finished the front panel with pocket holes, but I didn't like how it turned out. So I decided I'd do something different for the rest of it. So I went to the miter saw to cut the pieces for the sides and then enter the dowel jig. I was able to drill all 36 dowel holes in the two side panels in less than five minutes and they all lined up. This thing is a real time saver. I marked all the sides and I just had to remember that if I flipped one piece onto the jig to drill the holes, I had to flip the adjoining side as well. Now it was about this point that I figured out all I needed to do was flip a board end for end to drill the opposite end dowel holes. For the middle dowel holes, mark where the middle board will be. Remove the top portion of the jig, line the mark on the board with the corresponding mark on the jig. Easy peasy. Assembling the two sides was, well, quick and clean. I need four corner pieces. The corner pieces are one and a half by one and a half inches. I could have cut a two by four in half, but I didn't have any scrap two by four pieces left in my shop. I did have this two by six left over from the vertical herb garden project. So I got three of the four corners out of that, then a scrap one by three supplied the fourth corner. To cut the dados, I used the table saw. Now the router probably would have been quicker, but I didn't want to dig it out and set it up. I have a walkthrough of this process in the drill press drum sanding station video. I'll put a link to that in the description.
After the dados are cut in the corners, I'll attach them to the front and back panels first. Then the side panels. Clamps help me keep the joint nice and tight while I tack them in place. Now the front panel. I wasn't worried about it being square at this stage. I'll square it when I attach the floor. Speaking of the floor, I edge glued some 1x4s for that. A glue up this wide is hard to do without referencing each board off of the next. I usually use biscuits to do that. However, since I just made this dowel jig, I decided to use it worked out beautifully. 